Thanks for joining me on this bead weaving project. Take a look at the materials in the list below and gather everything you need to get started. We're going to begin by making the bezel for our 18 millimeter Rivoli. We're going to start on the back side here and you can see on this one here I haven't cut all my tail threads off yet but we're going to start on the back side here using our tubelets and our pearls and some of our seed beads to make this back section and then we'll move on to the front and work on this herringbone stitch and these strips of herringbone that will overlap each other and interlace to create this really awesome woven look. The first thing we're going to do is start by making this back with the tubelets and the pearls. We're going to start here with our stop bead on the end of our thread and I'm going to pick up a tubelet <laughs> okay, I'm going to pick up a tubelet, pick up one of my seed beads, a pearl, another seed bead, and then another tubelet. And these buggers can be a little hard to pick up, so sometimes you just pick them up with your hands. <laughs> so now that I have these beads on my thread, I'm going to take my needle and thread and go back up through the first tubelet. And as I pull that tight and pull it down to my stop bead, you'll see that you'll form a little bit of a triangle shape here with my tubelets and the pearls there at the top. Since this is my first little section that I'm making, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce that. So I'm going to go back through all of the beads again. So I've passed through my seed beads and my pearl. I'm going to go back through that tubelet and up through the other tubelet. And I'm just ignoring my stop bead, so once that, once my product is done, I can just remove that stop bead from the thread. So at this point here, I'm going to continue adding sections like this section here. I already have one tubelet here for one side of my V, so I'm going to pick up a seed bead, one of my pearls, a seed bead, and then I need the section or I need the tubelet here for the other side of the V. So I'll pick up a tubelet and then once I go up through this tubelet here that I am sharing and I pull that tight, that will create an identical little section, identical little V shape but sharing that center tubelet. Pass through your seed bead, your pearl and your seed bead. And always pull tight. You want to make sure that you don't have any slack in your thread. And go down through the tubelet there on the end. Coming out of the bottom here of this tubelet, I'm now going to add another section. So this section, since I'm coming out of the bottom of the tubelet, I'm going to pick up my tubelet first because I'm just picking up the beads in the order in which I need to have them added here. So I'm starting with my tubelet and then, <laughs> and then these beads just don't like me today. <laughs> and then another seed bead, one of my pearls and then another seed bead. And you can see as I let those fall down and I pull them close to my other beads, it's going to create that same shape. So now I'm going to go down through the tubelet that I previously added and this one I will be sharing. So when I pull those beads tight, I now have another section. So you're going to continue in this manner, adding the beads on, adding all of your little uh, triangular sections here, until you've got a total of eight tubelets. So this next section here, I'm going up my tubelet, so now I'm at a, a location here where the next beads that I want to add on are going to be my seed bead, my pearl, and my seed bead, 
and then I'll add my tubelet and continue from there. So go ahead and continue until you've got eight tubelets and then we'll move on. After adding your eighth tubelet, you'll notice that the only thing you have to do here is now bridge the gap between the two tubelets. So coming out of the top of the tubelet here where, where your thread is coming out the top here, we're just going to pick up a seed bead, a four millimeter pearl, and another seed bead. And we're gonna go down through that tube directly opposite of it just to bridge that gap and complete this circle. We're also going to go up through the tubelet next to it here, working in that same little V section. Again, just to close everything up to make sure all the connections are there that we have in all the other sections. And also for good measure, I'm going to go back through these beads again and reinforce it. Every time I do this, every time I reinforce something, what I'm doing is just taking the thread and needle back through all the same beads. It helps to pull things tighter so that it, uh, so it, the design isn't loose and I don't have any slack in my thread. And I like to do that anytime I have like a beginning or an end point uh, or I'm going to build off of something, it just reinforces it and makes a more sturdy um, building block. So now we're going to move into the step here, the stage where we are going to start working with herringbone. So to do that, um, if you want to go ahead and brush up on your herringbone, go ahead. Otherwise, I will do my best to teach you right here and now how to do herringbone. We're going to start our herringbone here with the pair of seed beads that we have sitting above the tubelets between all of our pearls. So I want to get my thread and needle in position so that I am coming out through both of those pearls. Right now my thread and needle is coming out of a tubelet, so I'm going to just pick a direction. It doesn't matter if you go to the right or the left, and I'm going to go through my 11 o my pearl, and then the next two 11 o's. So now these two 11 o's are going to be the base of my herringbone. So to do this herringbone, I'm going to pick up another two beads, and I'm gonna go back through these two beads sitting above the tubelet. Now for me with herringbone, I always like to work with the side where I'm going to be um, using my needle. I always want to be working on the right side. I'm right handed and it's just easier for me. So if I flip this back and forth, it's just so that I have the needle in my right hand at all times. So what I'm going to do here now to get this herringbone started is I'm going to pass up from the bottom to the top through the first seed bead in that set of two that we just added. So the second, so we have here my two seed beads that are sitting above the tubelet and then the two seed beads that I added above there. I'm going to go from the bottom to the top up through that first bead, that bead on the right. And I'm going to give it a little pull every time I do this and just make sure that my thread is tight and I don't have any slack. And now I'm going to pick up two more beads and I'm going to go down through the bead on the left. Now here is where I switch it and I flop it over or I flip it over here. So now my thread is coming out of the bottom of the bead, you can see two beads down. I have my thread coming out through the bottom of that bead. I'm going to kind of do like a little U-turn and I'm going to go, I'm gonna skip that bead where my thread is coming out and I'm gonna go through the bead all the way on the top at the end of my herringbone on the right side and go from the bottom to the top. So I'm always going away from me and just give that a little tug. I like to make sure it's tight. Two more of my seed beads. 
and again down through the first bead on the left side. I'm going to flip this again. and keep that pesky thread out of the way, that tail thread. And I'm gonna skip the bead where my thread is coming out, and I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top, out through the bead directly above it. So what you'll see is as you work here, it will be a little bit loose, it will feel a bit loose, and that's perfectly fine. And you will have thread showing on the outside of every other bead because what we're doing is we're going from the under we're going out the um, bottom of that bead and then going around the outside of that bead to get to the bead on top of it. Now I'm going to continue with this herringbone until I have 12 rows of herringbone. So that is 12 rows of herringbone in addition to the two beads that I have sitting on top of my tubelet bead. So if you're going to count those two beads here, you're gonna have 13 rows of beads total, but I'm only making 12 herringbone ro rows. So go ahead and continue here with your herringbone until we have that 12 rows of herringbone, and then we will connect to another pair of seed beads. Once you've completed your length of herringbone and you have 12 rows of herringbone here, we're going to now connect the end of the herringbone to another spot on our little wheel here. I'm going to work to the right here because that's easiest for me, um, but you could go to the right or the left. I'm going to count over two tubelets from where I'm currently working. So I have my, um, my herringbone here sitting atop of this tubelet. So I'm gonna count over two tubelets, and this is where I'm going to add and connect the length of the opposite end here of my herringbone. I'm gonna take my herringbone and flip it over the project and line it up. I'm gonna line up the end of my herringbone with the seed bead sitting directly atop of the tubelet where I'm going to attach it. I want to line up my seed bead so that I have the right seed bead aligning with the right seed bead in the pair of two above the tubelets and the left aligning with the left. So here I am holding it this way here. So now I have my new pair my new tubelet, my new pair of seed beads. My thread here is now coming out of the left seed bead at the end of my herringbone. So I'm going to pass through the left seed bead and continue on through the next seed bead. And this is the pair of seed beads sitting right above the tubelet. So just pass through both of those seed beads. And now coming out of the seed bead here on the right, I'm gonna go up through the seed bead on the right of my, of my herringbone. So I'm just connecting those four beads together and keeping them aligned. I'll go through again just to reinforce this. So down through, down or up, depending on your perspective, <laughs> through the bead in the herringbone here on the left, starting with the bead on the left, going through the two beads above the tubelet, and then through the bead on the right of my herringbone. I'm going to go through the bead on the left side here of my herringbone, and now I'm going to backtrack a little bit on my wheel here and coming out of that bead in the herringbone, I'm gonna pass through the pearl and the two seed beads that are going to be to the left. And so here I am coming out of the two beads here that are sitting sort of in the center of where I connected my herringbone. 
So I went two tulips to the right to connect, and now I'm backtracking one to the left to start a new length of herringbone. So every length of herringbone that we do, we're going to connect, um, we're going to begin, and we're going to connect the exact same way. It's going to get just a little bit trickier um, the more herringbone lengths we have since we're going to start interlacing them. Uh, so I will show you how to attach each one as we go. We're going to start here again by making that length of herringbone exactly the same. So we're going to go ahead and start it the same way and we're going to make it 12, uh, 12 layers or 12 rows wide or long. <laughs> And then once we have that where we need it to be, uh, we will go ahead and do the next connection. I have my second length of herringbone. And so my second length of herringbone, it's going to be pretty much the same as the first length of herringbone. I'm going to count two tubelets over to the right, and that's where I'm gonna make my connection. And I'm going to connect just as I did in the first one. Like I had mentioned before, each connection here is going to be the same, and each time we begin the herringbone is going to be the same. The only difference is just going to be how we overlap them to make sure that the lengths of herringbone create the pattern that we want them to. So for the second length of herringbone, I'm simply connecting it in the same way that I did for the previous one. Nothing really, nothing really different about this one. So now that I've connected it, I'm going to again backtrack. So I'm going to take my thread and needle and I'm going to go through that purl and I'm going to go through the two seed beads directly after the purl. Now this set of two seed beads we've already connected a length of herringbone to but we're going to go ahead and use those two seed beads anyway to create a new length of herringbone. So the only difference here with creating the herringbone is that you just already have some beads attached there, but we're just going to ignore those. We're going to go ahead and start just like we would, keeping the new length of herringbone, of course, just out to the side here. And here we go, and we're going to just continue from here adding a new length of herringbone off of those same two beads. And then once we have that new length of herringbone completed, we'll go ahead and make that next connection. For this third length of herringbone, again, I'm going to count over two tubelets to the right, and that's where I'm gonna make my connection. And as I make this connection, I'm going to just to make sure that this is this new length of herringbone that I'm connecting just sits on top of and overlaps the lengths of herringbone that I've already added. And once I add this, I'm going to continue, again, following the same pattern, backtracking one to the left, and I will connect in the same way that I added and I started my last herringbone section. This, once I have this connected here, I'm going to backtrack to this section here. This one already has a length of herringbone connected, so I'm going to add it the same way. I'm going to create that new length of herringbone the same way that I just created this one. So you can see that I have moved ahead and I've connected, I've created and connected the fourth, fifth, and sixth length of herringbone here in exactly the same way that I did the third. So each one of these is going to overlap each other and we're going to start seeing this beautiful pattern of overlapping herringbone. I do have my seventh one started here, but before I go any farther, I wanna make sure that I get my Rivoli tucked into the bezel here. So at this point, it's quite easy to just pull that herringbone to the side and tuck the Rivoli in. So we're going to take advantage of this opportunity here while we still can put our Rivoli into the bezel and we're gonna stick that in there. So once you have that in there, we're going to go ahead and move on 
and work with our seventh length of herringbone. Now we're going to start with the seventh length of herringbone and we're going to make that connection to the to the base of the bezel here. This is where things start to get a little bit tricky just because we're going to be working in a little bit tighter space than we're used to. Here I'm going to make the connection just as I have previously, but this is the first connection that we're going to make where instead of adding to adding to the outside of a connection or of a pair of uh, seed beads here, we're going to actually go underneath. So if I take my length of ribbon here, my length of um, herringbone, and I pull that over the bezel just like I have been, I'm going to pull it over the length of herringbone right beneath it and over my crystal. And the connection point that I would normally connect to, you can see, already has a piece of herringbone connected there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this seventh piece of herringbone underneath the connection, the length of herringbone that's already there. I'm going to take my thread and needle and I'm going to go through the same beads that I would normally, that I have in all the previous steps, but I'm just going to sneak in and go underneath. So I'm going to pass through my two seed beads above the tubelet. I'm going to try to get them all in one fell swoop here. And you can see that's pulling that length, that's pulling that length of herringbone. And then again, I'm just going to sneak under the existing length of herringbone. And I'll go up through the seed bead in the herringbone and give that a nice tight pull and as I pull tight I'm going to lift the herringbone on top to just allow my herringbone that I'm pulling tight to sneak underneath there. So it is going to be a bit of a tight space that you're working in but we just want to make sure that we get that new herringbone that we're, added, that we're adding, we want to make sure that connection is just getting pushed underneath the existing herringbone that's already connected there. And I'll go through and reinforce that. And as you go through and reinforce, this also gives you another opportunity to get a nice tight pull on that and to pull that herringbone, the new length of herringbone, under the existing length of herringbone. Okay, so here we are now. And if you have something, if you have a tool that you wanna use, you could always use a tool like your little bead scoop here just to lift that herringbone and slide the other herringbone underneath it. It is going to be a little bit of a tight space, but you will definitely, but you'll definitely make that work there. So now what we're going to do is move ahead or backtrack as we've been doing, and we're going to go through the next purl and the next set of two seed beads here and make, uh, I believe this is our eighth, this should be our eighth length of herringbone, our eighth and final length of herringbone. So we'll make that eighth and uh, final length of herringbone and then we will connect it, we'll make our last connection and you'll see how this all comes together. We're going to do this eighth piece exactly the same way that we just did the seventh one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started and let you see how I make that final connection. Okay, we are on our eighth and final length of herringbone. So I have my last piece of herringbone here and I'm going to pull it forward over my project, over this length underneath it going to have that length here underneath and now I'm going to count over two tubelets so I know exactly where I need to make my connection. 
I'm going to take my needle and thread. I'm going to take my needle and thread and just put my needle and thread under all of that herringbone that is already laying on top and over my crystal. So I'm going under that herringbone and that should help me to get started with this new length of herringbone that I'm adding to um, start pulling that under all the other herringbone. I'm going to go through the same two beads here where I would be connecting above my tubelet. And I'm not worried about it being real tight yet. And then I'm going to go under that herringbone, all that herringbone again. And then the one that I'm connecting to, I'm going to go up through that length of herringbone. And now that I have all those connections made, I'm going to give it a nice tight pull. And as I do this, you're going to want to use something like this, um, this little bead scoop here if you need something just to help lift that, uh, th that herringbone that you're trying to sneak under. And push that herringbone under, push the herringbone over, give it a nice tight pull, and just kind of push everything into position. I'm gonna reinforce this a little bit and because it can be really hard to see exactly what beads you're going through, um, I am not terribly worried about making sure that I'm getting through all the exact beads. I'm just making sure that I am getting through the beads on that last piece of herringbone and then I am connecting it securely to the seed beads above the tubelet. In a perfect world, we would use the exact beads that we needed to, but no one is going to know if you don't hit that bead exactly correctly. So now that I have that nice and tight, and you can see here that everything's come together. If I turn this, you can't really tell where I started and where I stopped, where I began and where I ended, and this is exactly what we want. So it's kind of like this beautiful optical illusion. So at this point now, I can reinforce if I want to, um, but what I'm going to do here is take my needle and thread, and I'm just going to kind of find whatever beads I'm closest to, and I'm going to take my needle and thread and bring it to the back of my project. And now at this point, if you want to use it just like this, if you want to use it like a component, you could always add something to the back and make it into a really pretty hefty ring, or you can make a brooch or a hat pin. I'm going to turn this into an earring, uh, so I'm going to show you next how to turn that into an earring. The ear wire that I've chosen to use for this piece is a lever back ear wire that has a setting for a crystal. So when you're going to use something like this with a setting, you just want to make sure that you're matching up the crystal and the, chat or the chaton, whichever crystal it is, and the setting size so they are a match. So this is my SS29 or 6 millimeter setting, so I made sure that I grabbed a 6 millimeter chaton. I'm going to just drop the chaton in the setting gingerly <laughs> and I'm going to make sure that it is sitting pretty flat and then I'm going to work my way I actually find this easier to work with when I have this open so I don't have so I have something to grip onto here so I'm going to actually once I get this crystal where I want it and I'm going to just drop it in there I'm going to start with one little prong and I'm going to give that a little push down and work my way around and adjusting as I go. Sometimes it's best to work with uh, prongs on the opposite side so that you know that you are getting it 
you're kind of getting it even there. You're working on opposite sides, tends to help with that. But I'm just going to go around here and press those prongs down. And you can be careful with this. You don't have to be too forceful. You can always come back down and squish a prong a little more if you don't think you got it enough the first time. So that's looking pretty good. I might need to tweak it a little bit, but that's actually looking pretty good. And you can always add a little dab of glue if you want uh, to hold that in. But if you do uh, use any glue, you want to make sure that you let that glue dry very well before you start trying to manipulate the prongs. You don't want any glue squeezing out on you and on the crystal while you're working. So you can see I have that in there pretty well now. It looks very even and all my prongs are down. So now all I have to do is attach to attach here to my to my Rivoli piece and there is my finished earring. I matched the crystal in the earring here to the crystal color that I chose for the Rivoli but of course you don't have to. You can have a lot of fun with this design. And instead of doing one solid color of seed beads, you could alternate colors of seed beads. Um, so many different ways that you can take this and make it even more ostentatious <laughs> than it already is. I hope you enjoyed making this project as much as I did. If you're interested in more tutorials from us, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you're notified as soon as we put out new videos.